hi guys welcome to the next video i'm doing the video in a place as you can see here it's just uh, sitting on the ground and then doing the video so this video is about the jet engine and uh, today i will be discussing regarding the efficiency of the jet engine so we'll try to look into the efficiency so whenever i'm talking about the efficiency of the jet engine i need to consider two different efficiency one is the thermal efficiency and another is the propulsive efficiency so first of all we try to look into thermal efficiency what is thermal efficiency now we burn the fuel and then because of the burning of the fuel we get some thrust from the engine and that is the whatever thrust from we get from the engine that is the output so whatever the horsepower output we get from the engine divided by the horsepower output of the fuel is what we call as thermal efficiency and what is propulsive efficiency it is the efficiency of converting the kinetic energy into propulsive uh, work so what exactly is thermal efficiency and prop propulsive efficiency in a very you know simple way uh, thermal efficiency is the conversion of fuel energy into kinetic energy whereas propulsive efficiency is the conversion of kinetic energy into propulsive work in thermal efficiency we are converting fuel into kinetic energy whereas in propulsive efficiency we are converting the kinetic energy into propulsive work now what factor could affect the propulsive efficiency it is affected by the kinetic energy that is wasted while propelling uh, the propeller because the whenever the propeller moves there will be a lot of uh, you know wastage in the kinetic energy and that would affect the propulsive efficiency what about the uh, thermal efficiency well thermal efficiency can get affected by high turbine inlet temperature and it can also get affected by the compression ratio and the component e efficiency of the compressor and the turbine has also uh, the effect on the thermal efficiency the ideal situation is for uh, having the perfect uh, thermal efficiency is the temperature around 3000 degree fan height and the compression ratio in the range of 32 is to 1 now we'll try to look into why high turbine inlet temperature can contribute to um, the decrease in the uh, or the increase in the both cases we'll consider how turbine inlet temperature can affect the thermal efficiency well if the thermal efficiency is high now recall the definition of thermal, thermal efficiency it is the energy fuel energy conversion into kinetic energy so kinetic energy of the turbine so if the thermal efficiency is high that means the kinetic energy of the turbine will be higher and how it is possible for the kinetic energy of the turbine to be higher if the turbine inlet temperature is high so the condition is the turbine inlet temperature is high so if the turbine inlet temperature is high that implies that the turbine must be made of some high strength material high strength alloy and if indeed it is made of high strength alloy that means you would require less amount of cooling and if less amount of cooling is required that means more heat is available in the tailpipe and if more heat is available in the tailpipe that means the thermal efficiency is high correct because we are getting high kinetic energy because if the more heat is available at the tailpipe that means the kinetic energy of all the particles exhaust particles is higher and ultimately that will con uh, increase the net kinetic energy so that is the effect now we'll try to look into how low turbine inlet temperature can decrease the efficiency if the turbine inlet temperature is 1000 degree fahrenheit let's say now we'd require more air to cool it and if we require more air to cool it that means less air is available for com combustion and if less air is available for combustion that means the thermal efficiency would decrease if thermal efficiency decreases that means the power output we are getting will be reduced and in order to increase that we need to in get more fuel 
so the fuel consumption will get increased if that happens okay now <coughs> regarding the formula for the thermal uh, efficiency it is uh, as i told you it is the horsepower output of the engine divided by the horsepower output of the fuel and the propulsive efficiency formula is uh, twice the inlet velocity divided by the inlet velocity plus the final velocity okay remember this next we'll try to look into um, <coughs> how the net or the overall efficiency get affected with the, the velocity so the effect of efficiency with velocity we'll start off with the propulsive efficiency first so propulsive efficiency as I just mentioned is twice the velocity divided by the initial velocity plus the final velocity now if velocity increases that implies that 2v because at the top we got 2v isn't it at the bottom we got v plus vf so v or 2v whatever I'm referring to is the initial velocity so if the initial velocity get increased okay so at the top we got twice the velocity at the bottom we got just velocity so quite natural the increase in velocity will have more effect on the upstair compared to the downstair so that means if velocity is increased the 2v divided by v plus vf final velocity that whole thing would get increased and if the whole thing get increased that means the propulsive efficiency get increased so with increase in velocity the propulsive efficiency gets increased what about thermal efficiency now in case of uh, the high velocity condition now recall that mass per unit time is rho av so if velocity is increased that means mass per unit time is increased that means more of the air more massive air is coming into the uh, engine or in the combustion section specifically so if more air is there we would require more fuel and if fuel requirement is increased so quite natural if you recall it is the output of the engine divided by the output of the fuel so if uh, the fuel is increased now so quite natural that the thermal efficiency would decrease so thermal efficiency decreases with speed whereas propulsive efficiency increases with speed so now if i need to consider the overall efficiency what will be the value so overall efficiency is equal to thermal efficiency into propulsive efficiency and we have seen that thermal efficiency decreases with speed whereas the propulsive efficiency increases with speed but the overall effect is the efficiency get increased with speed so you'd prefer to fly anything with the higher speed because the net efficiency get increased <coughs> maximum propulsive efficiency we get around at 85 percent of the speed if velocity increased more so the question is why not 100 percent so if velocity get increased more the efficiency get decreased it never reaches 100 percent why is it so because if the velocity get increased the exhaust wake velocity also get increased but the aircraft speed does not increase significantly okay so propulsive efficiency can never be 100 percent it can always be maximum 85 percent okay why is it so because of the increase in the exhaust weg velocity but the aircraft speed does not increase significantly now what is the limitation of the propulsive efficiency we cannot increase the propulsive efficiency more maximum around the range of 500 550 why is it so because if the speed get increased beyond that it would create drag because of the shock stall and that is why there is a limitation we cannot increase the speed to a very high value okay because the diameter of the propeller blade is very high so the tip would reach uh, the speed of sound and if that happens it would lead to shock stop okay <coughs> now 
Now we'll try to look into the fuel consumption and power weight relationship. Now we prefer three spool contra rotating fan engine. Why is it so? Because it would have short rotor, it would have fewer compressor stages and that would make it light and compact and we would require pressure and the bypass ratio whatever is required it can be achieved. Now we'll try to look into another concept why th high thermal efficiency is equal to low propulsive efficiency because high thermal efficiency implies that there will be high temperature and high pressure that implies that the combustion temperature is increased if the combustion temperature is increased that implies the turbine inlet temperature will get increased and if the turbine inlet temperature get increased that implies that the exhaust velocity will be increased and propulsive efficiency again recall is twice the initial speed divided by initial speed by final speed so because the exhaust velocity is getting increased so the propulsive efficiency which is inversely proportional to the exhaust velocity is getting decreased so we need some sort of a compromise between high thermal efficiency and low propulsive efficiency so how can we do that so i need to reduce the exhaust velocity how can i reduce it if i need to reduce the velocity that means i'm required to reduce the kinetic energy of the exhaust velocity so what is contributing to the kinetic energy of the exhaust velocity it is the temperature so if i can mix some low temperature air with the exhaust velocity in that case the net exhaust velocity temperature would get decreased and with the decrease in the temperature of the exhaust air the net velocity would get decreased as well and if that happens in that case the efficiency would get higher and this design is possible by the use of bypass principle so we are using the bypass engine design now we'll try to look into the a pure jet engine and we'll try to look into that we'll, we'll rather analyze regarding why large uh, hp bypass engine has got smaller parts why the high pressure section of the turbo fan is smaller we'll try to look into that now a pure jet engine Quite natural the reactive thrust is more pure jet engine implies air passing through the core is more so because the air passing through the core is more so quite natural we would require heavy turbine whereas in case of bypass engine we require high pressure compressor combustion chamber and turbine but all are scaled down quite natural all need to be scaled down isn't it because maximum air is bypassing so we don't require that heavy turbine we don't require that big turbine so turbine will be scaled down so if turbine is scaled down quite natural the combustion chamber will also scale down and that implies that the compressor is also scaled down so everything is scaled down so bypass engine is basically a scale down and by doing so 20% reduction in weight can be achieved <coughs> now since in turbo, uh, turbo fan the reaction thrust is less that implies that the exit velocity is less and because the exit velocity is less and in order to have high reaction thrust and that is equal to 
the product of mass into acceleration if the exit exit velocity is less that means the acceleration will be lesser as well and if i need to increase it i need to increase the mass and if i need to increase the mass that means i would require bigger engine so that is why turbo fan engine is bigger than the turbo jet engine okay Next, we'll try to look at the concept called flat rating. In all the commercial aircraft, we use part throttle operation. And operating the engine in part throttle condition is known as flat rating. What exactly it means? That means that takeoff thrust is obtained below the full thrust setting why is it required if i am able to achieve the takeoff thrust without giving the full thrust that means some available thrust is with us and i can utilize this thrust later when can i do when can i use it now assume hot day condition in hot day condition temperature is high so the density of air is low and if the density of air is low, that means the mass of air which is coming inside will be lower as well. And if that happens, that means the thrust value which is equal to mass into acceleration will get decreased as well. Now, I got additional thrust and I can use that to generate the necessary thrust. At the same time, it is economical because we are not using the maximum thrust all the time. So. A full throttle engine is adjusted under standard ISA condition to produce full thrust while the throttle is full powered. Whereas a flat rated throttle engine is adjusted under standard ISA condition to produce full thrust while the throttle is not yet full forward. And the available thrust level is determined by the engine operating limits. Okay. Now, what is one more concept? Performance rating. Performance rating is the takeoff power of the aircraft with respect to the turbine inlet temperature. Now, if I consider a flat rated engine and a full throttle and rated engine, in case of flat rated engine, because it can make the takeoff power below the turbine inlet temperature whereas in case of full throttle rated engine it cannot make the takeoff power below the turbine temperature uh, limitation below the turbine inlet temperature limitation so that's it hopefully you understand and then later we'll look into uh, the different concepts again so the my, my next topic would be the construction i will start off with the construction and initially i will start off with the engine inlet section hopefully you enjoyed it liked it so if you like it make sure you subscribe to my channel like share the video tell your friends whoever is interested and take care bye bye